In this episode, we're going to be showing you how to overcome the brake overheating issues on the BMW FAX M cars. In this series, we're taking our stock BMW F80 M3 from a standard road car through to a very capable track car. We could have just put all the upgrades on at once, which we often do here for customers, but instead what we're doing is we're applying each upgrade one by one in an incremental fashion and data logging the difference each component makes. Over the winter, we've stopped doing that because ideally we need a dry track day to get the exact before and after on the same day for the data logger to keep the data consistent and accurate and the winter in Britain is very wet and rainy, so we thought we'll just park the car up over the winter and not do the data login. But what we did do over the winter was turn our attention to the brakes, because all throughout last year, and if you've seen the previous videos, you'll have already known this is a problem for us, is the constant braking overheating issues. We tried multiple things, we've had a few variations, and we finally landed on a really nice package that's working really well for us. And we'll talk to you now about what we've done over the winter and how we've got to this stage. So we were played with the brake overheating issues throughout last year, and that's mainly due to A, the mass of the car being 16 to 1700 kilos. It's a lot of weight to carry on track and to stop. And we were just overheating the brakes effectively out on track and they were just warping the discs all the time. This is despite proper warming up and cooling down procedures to make sure we're not shocking the disc, but ultimately the, the disc just kept getting warped. So the first thing we tried was different pad compounds and we tried a lot of different compounds, but every time the disc still warped, it would change slightly in terms of how long they took to warp, but ultimately they were still warping. So then the next step was we moved to the EBC two-piece rotors, which were meant to help a little bit more and they had better cooling in them and they lasted longer, but ultimately they still warped. So we were just plagued with these warping issues. So then we made the decision to change the entire brake package on the car and we've moved over to this kit now. So I'll take the wheel off and we'll show you what we've got fitted to the car now. We made the decision after trying a few different things to, to change the braking package over. So the car came with the standard brake kit, which is the blue caliper kit, which is a four pot front and a two pot rear. And we decided that this was most likely causing us issues along with the smaller size rotor that this kit comes with. So we moved over to the M Performance braking package, which is an optional upgrade on the M2 comps at factory, but it does fit the F80 M3 and the F82 M4 as well. It's a, it's a direct fit to the hub. So it's still a BMW, kit but it's the M performance braking package so you now have a six pot front caliper and a four pot rear caliper with larger diameter rotors as well so you've got more stopping force and more importantly a wider spread of heat because it's a larger pad so you're sharing the load over a much bigger surface area so it's a less concentrated patch on the disc which means that although the disc is still getting hot it's less concentrated in one area which is what causes warping ultimately when we moved over to this kit we solved one problem and found another. So what we did solve was the warping. As soon as we moved over to this braking package, the warping issues stopped completely. What did happen was after a few laps on circuit at Alton or Donny, so relatively short circuit, we did get fade, quite aggressive fade as well. So after two or three laps, the pedal was going down to the floor and that's despite having braided brake lines and racing brake fluid and padded pads that the four track as well. So we had the right pad in there, the right disc and caliper combination, but we we're still getting this brake fade. We were really happy with the fact that we had solved the warping issues and with the fade in mind, we've been spending a lot of time with Century Motorsport this year at track. So this took a bit of a backseat whilst we focused our efforts on the GT4 cars. And what we did notice on the GT4 cars was their brake cooling packages. So if you take a look at the front end of the previous gen GT4 cars, the F82 M4 GT4, you'll see on the front bumper, there's a difference between that and the standard front bumper that comes on the M3 and the M4. The difference there is that on the GT cars, there is a duct in the front bumper that is purely for guiding air straight into the back of the brakes and it's part of the brake cooling package. So as soon as we started having a look around the racing cars, we thought this is what we need to do. This is gonna be our solution to the ultimate problem. We've got the right hardware now, but now we need to keep it cool enough to maintain that pedal feel and keep them working at their optimum for as long as possible out on track. So that's exactly what we did. So let's take a closer look in the wheel arch now and we'll show you on the front bumper and inside here what we've done and how we've achieved that. So starting up at the front where the air comes in, we've put these ducts into the front bumpers. So we started off with the GT4 brake cooling duct, but as part of this build and the, the ethos behind it is we want everything that we do to be OEM plus. So we want it to be as though BMW or BMW Motorsport would have designed and made that part for the road. 
So we handed the car over to our friend Ben, who owns a really good body shop down in Nutsford, and we gave them the task of these carbon air ducts. We wanted them exactly here in the front bumper, but we wanted them to look like they came from factory, and that's exactly what he achieved. So he's put them into the back of the bumper, come through the front, and he's blended and painted them in to the front bumper. So this is our standard front bumper with them blended in. So this now means we have a brake duct that takes direct air from the front of the car, perfectly clean, cool airflow, straight in the front of the car, and then we've guided it into the back of the discs. So straight off the back of that brake duct, we have this air ducting hose that comes straight off the back, is rooted behind the wheel arch liner, slightly ovaled as it enters the wheel arch, so it clears on full lock where the tire wants to meet it. And then we've piped it straight into the back of this backing plate. So this backing plate is made by AH Fabrications. It's actually one of their sample prototypes supplied to Club Sport Garage, who supplied this to us to, to give a go. And we were very impressed with the design of the part for a start, because not only is it a backing plate, but it has an air chamber on the back of the plate, which steps proud, which perfectly guides the air straight into the core of the disc. And this is really critical for a good brake cooling package because some kits you see blowing onto the back of the rotor, which is bad because what that does is it basically cools the rear face of a two piece disc, but the front face stays red hot and it will warp or crack the front edge. So what you need to do is duck that air into the core of the disc, into the bell effectively. So the air can then come out these channels in the disc and they come out centrifugally and disperse. And that keeps both pieces of the disc perfectly cool at the same time as each other. So when we'd fitted this kit, we headed back to Walton Park for a track day with some customers and some friends, and we gave it hell all day in perfect conditions, and we were blown away by the difference that the cooling package made previously to what we had before. The big difference was, we still started getting a slightly spongy pedal after some really hard stops, but as soon as we got to the end of a straight, the pedal was fully back to like new. And it was such a massive difference. We could do lap after lap after lap, and every time we got to the end of the straight, the brake cooling package had cooled the disc down to a point where the pedal feel was completely back to where it should be. So we've got much better performance throughout the day, but more importantly, we would no longer warping discs and we've no longer got that pedal fade. So both issues are now completely removed and we're really happy with the package we've got. So we can move forward now with the rest of the upgrades and the rest of the videos, knowing that we've got really good brakes underneath us and we don't have to worry about that anymore. So in the next episode, we're gonna be moving across to the solid front control arm bushes and we're gonna be trying our concentric bushes first and then immediately moving into our front solid caster bushes to get the overlay of those different upgrades. So that's the next step now for this car.